Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2022. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering Numbers 12 through 14 and Mark 5, 21 through 43. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation and a smooth read through of your Word so that it will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Marion and Aaron oppose Moses. Numbers 12. Miriam and Aaron began to talk against Moses because of his Cushite wife, for he had married a Cushite. Has the Lord spoken only through Moses? they asked. Hasn't he also spoken through us? And the Lord heard this. Now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. At once the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out of the tent of meeting, all three of you. And so the three of them went out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud, and he stood at the entrance to the tent, and he summoned Aaron and Miriam. When the two of them stepped forward, he said, Listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. He is most faithful in all my house. With him I speak face to face, clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? The anger of the Lord burned against them, and he left them. When the cloud lifted from above the tent, Miriam's skin was leprous. It became as white as snow. Aaron turned towards her, and he saw that she had a defiling skin disease, and he said to Moses, Please, my Lord, I ask you not to hold against us the sin we have so foolishly committed. Do not let her be like a stillborn infant coming from its mother's womb with its flesh half eaten away. And so Moses cried out to the Lord, Please, God, heal her. Well, the Lord replied to Moses, if her father had spit if she if her father had spit in her face would she not have been in disgrace for 7 days confined her outside the camp for 7 days after that she can be brought back so Miriam was confined outside the camp for 7 days and the people did not move on until she was brought back after that, the people left Hazaroth and encamped in the desert of Paran. Exploring Canaan Numbers 13 The Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. And so the Lord commanded, commanded Moses, and Moses sent them out from the desert of Paran. All of them were leaders of the Israelites. These are the names of them. From the tribe of Reuben, Shahama, son of Zechariah. And from the tribe of Simon, Shephat, son of Horai. And from the tribe of Judah, Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and from the tribe of Iskarah, Igel, son of Joseph, and from the tribe of Ephraim, Hosea, son of Nun, and from the tribe of Benjamin, Palati, son of Rapul, and from the tribe of Zebulun, Gadali, son of Saudi, and from the tribe of Menash, a tribe of Joseph, Gadi, son of Susi. 
And from the tribe of Dan, Amili, son of Gemili. And from the tribe of Asher, Seth, Sethur, son of Michael. And from the tribe of Naphtali, Nehabi, son of Volf, Volfis. And from the tribe of Gad, Galul, son of Micaiah. And these are the names of the men Moses sent to explore the land. Moses gave Hosea, son of Nun, the name Joshua. When Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, Go up through the Negev and into the hill country. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees in it or not? And do your best to bring back some of their fruits of the land. It was the season for the first ripe grapes. And so they went up and explored the land from the desert of Zin as far as Rehab toward Lebon and Hamath. And they went up through the Negev and came to Hebron where Ahaman, Shaheshai, and Ptolemy, the descendants of Anak, lived. Hebron had built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And when they reached the valley of Ishkol, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them, along with some pomegranates and figs. That place was called the valley of Ishkol, because of the cluster of grapes the Israelites cut off there. At the end of forty days they returned from exploring the land. Report on the exploration. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it uh, does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in their hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are, and they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said the land was we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there. The descendants of Anak came from the Nephilim. And we seemed like grasshoppers in our eyes, and we looked the same to them. And the people rebelled. Number 14. That night all the members of the community raised their voices and wept out loud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. 
would it be easier for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, We should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, The land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into the land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because it will devour them, and we will devour them, and their protection is gone. But the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. But the whole assembly talked about stoning them. And then the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting to all the Israelites. The Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me, in spite of all the signs I have performed among them? I will strike them down with a plague and destroy them. But I will make your you into a nation greater and stronger than they. Well, Moses said to the Lord, Then the Egyptians will hear about it, and by your power you brought these people up from among them, and they will tell the inhabitants of this land about it. They have already heard that you, the Lord, are with these people and that you the Lord have been seen face to face and that your cloud stays over them and that you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night if you pull off all these people to death if you put all these people to death leaving none alive the nations who have heard this report about you will say the Lord was not able to bring these people into the land he promised them on oath. And so he slaughtered them in the wilderness. Now may the Lord's strength be displayed, just as you have declared. While the Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love and forgiving sin and rebellion, yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation. In accordance with your great love, forgive the sins of these people just as you have pardoned them from the time they left Egypt until now. The Lord replied, I have forgiven them as you asked. Nevertheless, as surely as I live, and as surely as as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth, not one of those who saw my glory and the signs I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness, but who disobeyed me and te teased and tested me ten times, not one of them will ever see the land I promised on oath to their ancestors. No one who has treated me with contempt will ever see it. But because my servant Caleb had a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land and he went to, and his descendants will inherit it. And since the Amalekites and the Canaanites are living in the valleys, turn back tomorrow and set out toward the desert along the route of the Red Sea. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, How long will this wicked community crumble against me? I have heard the complaints of these grumbling Israelites. So tell them, As surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very thing I have I heard you say. 
and in this wilderness your bodies will fall. Every one of you, twenty years old or more, who was counted in the census and who has grumbled against me, not one of you will enter the land I swore with uplifted hand to make your home except Caleb, son of Jehuna, and Joshua, son of Nun. And as for your children that you said would be taken as plunder, I will bring them into in to enjoy the land you have rejected. But as for you, your bodies will fall in this wilderness. Your children will be shepherds here for forty years, suffering for your unfaithfulness until the last of your bodies lies in the wilderness. For forty years, one year for each of the forty days you explored the land. Now you will suffer for your sins and know what it is like to have me against you. I, the Lord, have spoken. And I will surely do these things to this whole wicked community, which has banded together against me. They will meet their ends in the wilderness. Here they will die. So the men Moses had sent to explore the land, who returned and made the whole community grumble against him by spreading a bad report about it. These men, who were responsible for spreading the bad report about the land, were struck down and died of a plague before the Lord. Of the men who went to explore the land, only Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, survived. And when Moses reported this to all the Israelites, they mourned bitterly. Early the next morning they set out for the highest point in the hill country, saying, Now we are ready to go up to the land the Lord promised. Surely we have sinned. But Moses said, Why are you disobeying the Lord's command? This will not succeed. Do not go up, because the Lord is not with you. You will be defeated by your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites will face you, you there, because you have turned away from the Lord. He will not be with you, and you will fall by the sword. Nevertheless, in their uh, presumption, they went up toward the highest point in the hill country. Through, uh, though neither Moses nor the Ark of the Lord covenant moved, from the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who lived in the, that hill country came down and attacked them and beat them down all the way to Haramah. And that was Numbers 12 through 14. And now we will be turning to Mark 5, 21. Mark 5, 21, Jesus raises a dead girl and heals a sick woman. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressured around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. And when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd, and she touched his cloak. Because, she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. 
Immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him, and he turned around in the crowd, and he asked, Who touched me? And who touched my clothes? And you you see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. And then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Well, while Jesus was still speaking, some of the people came from the houses of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Your why brother, the, why bother the teacher any more? Well, overhearing what they said, Jesus told them, "Don't be afraid, just believe." And he did not let anyone follow him except for Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And when they came into the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and He went in and he said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. And after he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him. And he went in where the child was. And he took her by the hand and he said to her, Talitha Kuma, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the little girl stood up and began to walk around. She was twelve years old. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this, and he told them to give her something to eat. And that was Mark five twenty-one through 43, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe, 2022 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Numbers 5 through 16 and Mark 6, 1 through 29. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word I could not be your messenger of the word. I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. I, Shenandoah Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the Word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So come back and see me tomorrow, or see us tomorrow, because we'll be here, God willing, and we hope that you are too.